morning. Shall we all sing as we are gathered and meditate upon this song as we concentrate and focus on our Creator today? As we are gathered, Jesus is here. and a very warm welcome and happy Sabbath to each and every member here. A special welcome to visitors who may be in our midst. And we pray, Lord, that there will be a special blessing for each one of us. This is the first Sabbath of New Year 2024, and we can look back in gratitude to God for the way in which he has led us throughout the past year. Uh, please pay attention to the announcements that follow. Prayer meeting every Wednesday on Zoom is there on the bulletin. All the announcements are actually on the bulletin, so you can read them, but I'll highlight them. Christ Object Lessons study every Wednesday, uh, sorry, every Monday with Zoom. The Zoom details are given. Sharing your talents, the QR code is there on that. And as we are aware, we are having the Holy Communion service today. This afternoon, 3 p.m., request as many as possible to stay back for uh, the church strategic planning afternoon from 3 p.m. All your thoughts and uh, suggestions and ideas would be most welcome. The 10 days of prayer start this week, and the Last announcement is Pathfinders and Adventurers starts from January 20th this month. The Zoom details are also given in that. So at this time, shall we bow our heads reverently and ask the Lord to bless our worship? Shall we pray? A most kind and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us to this thy church, the place of worship for each one of us. We thank you for being our God, our guide, our sustainer, our redeemer. And we pray a special blessing on the service today. Bless each member worshiping with us, whether they're present here or online. And we pray, Lord, especially for those who can't be with us due to illness and other reasons. Help us, O Lord, to love thee and live for thee. This is our prayer in the most holy name of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us sing hymn number 10. Come, Christians, join to sing for our congregational singing. May I request everyone to please stand.
A blessed Sabbath to everyone. Before our deacons and deaconess receive our tithes and offerings, allow me to read this uh, short passage. It says here that each new year brings it a new promise of change. For college professors, when they look into the eyes of new students each semester, they see hope and excitement for a better future. Similarly, many have entered the doors of our local church in search of hope for a better future. Like a student who is given a clean slate on the first day of, of class, the gospel of hope in Jesus that we have as Christians provide us all with a clean slate through salvation. Students sit in classroom, hopeful to have their first or their thirst for knowledge filled by what they learn day after day together. And the thing teachers like to impress in all of their classes is that they will get exactly what they put into the class. If they show up, engage in discussion, and choose of intentionally connect, they will get a lot out of it. Much of the blessing of being part of a local church comes from choosing to intentionally connect. One profound way to do is through giving to our church local offering. I mean, our local church offering. And if Psalm 63, 1, it says, You, God, are my God, earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you, my whole being longs for you, in dry and parched land where, thing, where there is no water. Our local church community exists to serve those in the immediate surrounding community as well as believers worldwide. Our deacons are now ready to receive our tithes and offerings. Amen. Let us pray. Our Christ, Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you so much for this uh, new Sabbath, for this new year. We are grateful and thankful that you have brought us to this uh, church in this early month of January 2024. Father, you, you, you were indeed, uh, have been gracious, generous to each of us throughout 2023. And we are looking forward to journey with you for this new year. We give back the t our tithes and offerings, Father, to show our gratitude and our faith to you. Continue to be with us, Father, in every things that we do, in our work, in our endeavors. Blessed be your name for always. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 
A recent study by the National Sleep Foundation found that playing video games, checking emails and text messages, or watching television at night may be depriving us from getting enough sleep. Nearly 95% of people questioned in the study said they used some type of electronics in the hour before going to bed, and about two-thirds admitted they do not get enough sleep during the week. Exposure to artificial light before going to bed can increase alertness and suppress the release of melatonin, a sleep-promoting hormone. That's a fact. But there's hope. You can make a big, positive impact on sleep, mood, health, relationships, stress management, work productivity, and academic performance by making a small change in electronic use before bed. So, switch your device for a book at least a few evenings a week and have a better night's sleep. Mark 14, verse 12 to 15. On the first day of the unleaved bread, we, when they killed the Passover, his disciplines said unto him, Where wilt thou, thou that we go, and prepare thou mayest eat the Passover? And he sat and forth two of his disciplines, and said unto them, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him, and wherever so he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house, the master saith, where is the gas chamber, where I shall eat the Passover with the disciplines, and he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared, there make ready for us. Amen. Now comes our time for family prayer together. I invite you to kneel or bow as we seek the Lord in prayer. Dear Father God, we bow humbly in your presence, thanking you for the past year for all you have provided for your church family. We thank you for the new year that we, that we can serve you and each other. We thank you for your love, for your mercies that you have given to each of us. And this love enables us to show grace and love to others. May your church prosper as we seek your plans that you have for us in 2024. May we always seek your guidance of the Holy Spirit in everything we do, and as we as, as we continue to do, to witness to others, may your light shine in our lives and through us, so your name may be glorified. Forgive us for all the times we have let you down. And my Lord, we ask you grant this victory over sin in our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit. We ask for a special blessing upon those who cannot be here for various reasons, and for those who are struggling with health issues in our church, be near to each, each, each one of them. Be with us, each one, this morning, from the youngest to the oldest. And as we partake in the communion service, we are reminded how much you love us and how you, how you gave your life for us. May this love that you have set and given to us Shine in our hearts that others may see you and want to follow you. All these things I ask in your precious, my precious Saviour's name. Amen.
song near the cross it does remind us of that wonderful day when Jesus gave his life for each one of us but before those moments before those hours long hours right there at that cross we have to remember something and today, I believe it's time for us to remember what Jesus did and what Jesus desires us to remember each moment, each day of our lives. In Luke, 9, in Luke 22, 19, Dr. Luke penned down these words, And he took bread and gave thanks, and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Right before us today 
are symbols of which Jesus wants us to remember him. I don't know with you, but every time I go to parks or see some beautiful buildings, I always see these plates, either a small plate that says, In Memorial Of. Or you know, a bigger plate in buildings that tells us to whom these buildings were uh, built for. Majestic buildings that are erected for on behalf or in memorial of great men. You could say large hospitals, well-known schools, churches even. I even see some churches or some uh, buildings that have the name, you know, written on, on, on chairs, on the back of the chairs, or even in, in hymnals, or so many other books and things just to remember somebody. Well, all the strength and beauty of the life of our Lord Jesus Christ rises before us whenever we sit at his table and hear him say, this do in remembrance of me. And so, we as Christians believe that the communion service is the central act of worship that is found in every Christian church. It is the expression the best expression of God's grace to man. It is actually the, the complete interpretation of the Christian gospel expressed in symbolic acts. Long before any one of us have mobile phones where we see things right before our eyes, in Jesus' time, He instituted Three great symbols that would remind us of his great act of salvation. And I do believe that there is no other form of worship that draws men so near to God and draws God near to man than does the communion service does to each one of us. So today, after almost 2,000 years, we still do this in remembrance of Jesus. We break the bread. We remember the body that was broken for us. We take the wine, pour it out, and remember the blood that was shed for us. And all of this we do in the command or through the command of our Lord Jesus Christ as we celebrate the Last Supper. But before the Last Supper, we all know that there's one more ordinance that Christ have instituted so that we will remember him more. Not just what he did on the cross, but we would remember the life that he lived for us. And I want to take you, you know, briefly from that story that was read to us a while ago by Brother Benjamin. That while all of Jerusalem was so busy preparing for the Passover, the disciples were actually quite anxious of what they will do where they will gather for the Passover. Everyone was already busy in their own homes. But what will they have to do where in, now they're still in Bethany? But where will they meet? Where will they meet? And yet unknown to them, Jesus has a better plan for the occasion. 
It's not just Passover as usual. And Jesus gave them very specific instruction of what they would have to do so that everything will be prepared for them. One of the, fam one of the stories that I would always remember is that story when Jesus told two of his disciples, Go, look for a man who has a pitcher on his hand, and he will tell you, where we will meet. Why is this very important? Why would Mark put it in such details? Well, we all know back in those days, men will not go to the well and fetch some water. It, will be, it is the woman's job back in those days to do that. So for Peter and John, it's not, you know, it's not so hard for them to just pick on the guidance of, of Jesus Christ that when you see this man, go follow him, ask him where we are going to meet, and you will be able to see. And surely, as it happened, you know, as it happened from the readings that we have, it says what? His disciples said to him, Where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? So the disciples were just thinking of the Passover, but Jesus, as I've said, had something else in mind. And so he sent that forth two of his disciples and said to them, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him, and wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house, the master said. Where is the guest chamber? Where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples, and he will show you, show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared, there make ready for us. Haven't you ever asked the question, did Jesus actually did all these preparations? But the disciples just followed his very instructions. And there they were able to find that room, upper room, good enough for them to celebrate the Passover. But we all know that as they gather in that room, everyone Probably a week before everyone was so busy to think of who is the greatest in the kingdom of God. But at this point in time, at this point in time, as they gather in that room, one of the questions should be, who shall be the servant? Everyone is so busy, isn't it? To celebrate the Passover. So who will be the servant at this point in time? Who will serve the disciple? And it is there and then, as John describes it to us, in John 13 verse 1, Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. When no one is ready to serve Jesus right from that moment, took that humble part of washing his disciples' feet. We are told that the master rose, laid aside his outer garments, and would that would impede him. He took the towel and girded himself. Then he poured water into a basin, walked towards Judas, and knelt down before his feet. Then followed the lesson of humility. Here we could see how the Lord Jesus reversed the standard of the day. It is an unusual thing for the master to wash his disciples' feet. But Jesus did that. An act of humility. Jesus taught them right there and then that the highest vocation in the world the best thing that anyone could do in the world would be of that serving 
other people. He knelt before each one, you know, in turn. His hair fell in short folds about his noble head. Those sacred hands, we are told, so often outstretched in the ministry of healing. Those hands that you know, were used in touching the eyes of those who were blind and healed them. Those hands, you know, who, who make those, those uh, bread and those fishes multiply. At this point in time were the hands that held the disciples' feet. And one after another. <coughs> He did not stop. He did not speak. He just looked at their eyes and then washed. But we all know when it was Peter's turn, when it was Peter's turn, Apostle Peter exclaimed in astonishment and said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? We know what happened there and then. <coughs> what the master was doing basically broke Peter's heart. He could not bear to see the Lord, whom he believed to be the Son of God, acting the part of a servant. A wave of humiliation rolled over him, and with great emphasis he exclaimed, You will never wash my feet. But Jesus lifted his head and his eyes deep with understanding looked into the eyes of Peter and said, If I do not wash your feet, then you have no part of me. The Desire of Ages, page 646, tells us the service which Peter refused was the type of higher cleansing. Christ had come to wash the heart from the stain of sin. And in refusing to allow Christ to wash his feet, Peter was refusing the higher cleansing, including in the lower. He was actually, he was really rejecting his Lord. Church, we have to remember these very words. Because this is the very same thing that we do, we neglect on a quarterly basis when we miss participating in the ordinance of humility. The foot washing. I know there are many people who would say, I'm not ready to participate in the foot washing. I'm not holy enough. When will we be holy enough? We can never be holy enough without the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why the best thing that we could do is participate and remember what Jesus did for us. Be involved, be engaged, and do as what Jesus did. Before partaking of the communion emblems, the disciples must have their hearts cleansed. And that's why it is the desire of Christ that this ordinance of humility, the ordinance of foot washing, would wash away all the pride that is in us. The ordinance of humility would wash away the dissension, the dislike of others that is in our hearts even today. And that's why this service takes us back to the shores of our baptism to symbolize an inward cleansing. <coughs> Not in any effect, just like what I said last week, that the water have you know, the efficacy on it, that it really cleanses us. No. But we, what we do know is that the ordinance of baptism, the ordinance of foot washing, were ordained not merely for the physical cleansing, but as symbols of the cleansing grace of Jesus Christ. 
And that's why participation in the ordinance will, as we recognize Christ as our Savior, it will cleanse us from our sin. And it will enable Him to say to us, You are clean. But this cleansing service will not cleanse if the heart is not surrendered to Christ. That's why, church, we need to surrender our hearts fully to Jesus Christ as we go through these ordinances. We have the example of that in the Bible. Jesus may have washed, have washed Judas' feet, but Judas have not surrendered his heart. Thus, Judas was not purified, for he had not submitted himself to Christ. So solemnly, the Lord laid aside the towel and the basin to return to his place. After washing everyone. Because Peter did say, well, wash me, Lord. Everything of me, even. But Jesus said, of course, you don't need the whole cleansing. Just this bit, just to symbolize. Because you have been washed already. In verses 12 to 16, we are told, Know ye what I have done to you. Ye call me Master and Lord. And ye say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash once another's feet. For I have given you an example, that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say to you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. Review and Herald of November 4, 1902 did say these words. Reconciliation one with another is the work for which the ordinance of fit washing was instituted. By the example of our Lord and Master, this humiliating ceremony has been made a sacred ordinance. And that's why this is just the first thing that we have to remember. Later on, we would go down, do the bread and the wine, but for now, let us remember what Jesus did for us. He humbled himself. He served us. And may it be that today we would also be humbling ourselves, surrendering our hearts to Christ, so that the ordinance of the foot washing would purify our hearts and we will be one with Jesus in what he did for us. The Seventh-day Adventist Church is an open communion church. You may not be a member of this church, but if you love the Lord Jesus Christ and you would like to participate in the ordinance of the foot washing and the ordinance of partaking the bread and the wine later on, we would like to invite you at this point in time for all the men to go to, through these doors and um, you could find someone there to wash their feet and then your feet as well and so we would like to invite you here all the women would go to the main uh, hall at the back uh, to be with the rest of the ladies uh, but during the foot washing ordinance, we would like to ask all the children to go to this side of the hall for your 
children's story. Would that be okay? Yeah? Um, so as soon as you're finished with the foot washing, um, maybe you could pray immediately as men and as women or ladies at the back. And then please come to the hall so that we could proceed with the ordinance uh, of partaking of the bread and the wine, the communion, the Last Supper. Um, and with that, we will uh, ask our deacons to guide us and to assist us in this ordinance of foot washing. I hope you would think and reflect on the uh, beauty of this ordinance as Jesus has left it for us to do. And so before we go, let us just have a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we surrender our hearts to you. And may it be, O Lord, that as you have prepared our hearts even before to participate on all these ordinances, O God, that you would allow us to experience the full presence of your Holy Spirit, especially, O Lord, the spirit of humility that would be upon us so that we will be able to do this in remembrance of what you have instructed us to do. Lord, thank you for the, this beautiful ordinance. And may it be that you would continue to purify our hearts. And we just want to thank you, O God, for your grace and your love for allowing us to do this ordinance at this point in time. Because this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we proceed immediately to the rooms so that we will be able to come back here as soon as possible and proceed with the second part of our service.
I'm trying to see how I can make sure everybody can see what's happening. I've got a story today about two balls. Can you see my two balls here? Okay. I wonder what that's going to be about. Well, first of all, a long, long time ago, in fact, 2,000 years ago and more, when Jesus lived on this earth, he had an encounter with two bowls. And that's what I'm going to tell you about. Now, the first one, the first story of the first bowl, concerns a man called Pontius Pilate. Put your hands up if you've heard of Pontius Pilate. Have you heard of him before? Not many, a few of you. Okay, Pontius Pilate was the governor of Judea. All right? He was a Roman. Now, the Romans, boys and girls, I'm sure you remember, who had captured that country of Judea a long time ago, a long time before? The Roman army, right? So they were ruled by the Romans. So all the children of Israel that lived there, they were ruled over by, they were governed by the Romans and the Roman soldiers. Okay? So the Roman governor was called Pontius Pilate. And I can tell you that he was not a very nice man. Now, some people in history, some people who write history books, they think he was just a bit weak. Not a very good leader. But I believe, and a lot more people believe, that actually he was a very cruel, unkind, horrible leader and did some very horrible things to the people. So everyone was a bit afraid of him, okay? Including the Jewish leaders. Now, who were the Jewish leaders? They were the religious leaders of the day. And they were also ruled over by the Romans, but they were still quite powerful under the Romans. The Jewish leaders, the Sanhedrin, that was like a court of men, okay? A court. And they were like church people, they were church leaders. But they were very powerful as long as they did what Pontius Pilate said and as long as they did what the Romans told them to do then they could be themselves quite rich and quite powerful. And they made sure that all the people did what they said. So, first of all, they were a bit afraid of the Romans, but they were also afraid of the Jewish leaders and did whatever the Jewish leaders told them. And the Jewish leaders were very good at making rules. Now, how many... Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. How many rules did God give the children of Israel? Who can tell me how many rules did... Ten, right, ten. But the Jewish leaders, they invented, they created lots and lots and lots more rules and they made life very, very difficult and hard for the people. Now, back to my story of the bowl. So you remember what had happened. Jesus had come into Jerusalem with his disciples the week before. Now, I don't know if you can remember the story when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the Sunday before this story begins, and he rode in on his donkey, and all the children were waving palm branches and singing hallelujah. Do you remember that? Okay, so a few days later, we come to Thursday, okay? This is Thursday, and Jesus has been... Uh, with his disciples in a room having a supper and the next morning he was arrested and taken before the Roman governor Pontius Pilate. Now Pontius Pilate had a bowl, perhaps it was a bit like this one. And when Pontius Pilate stood before all the people and asked Jesus what is it that you've done wrong? And he couldn't find anything wrong with Jesus. Boys and girls, what sort of a person was Jesus when he lived on this earth? Was he a horrible leader? Or was he a kind person? What kind of thing?
things did he do, tell me, that makes you think he was kind? Yes? He healed the blind. Okay, yes? He healed the lepers. What else did Jesus do? Yeah? He calmed the storm. Yes? What else? That's right, he taught people how to be kind to each other. And what were you going to say? He rose people from the dead. Now, would you say that was a not a very nice leader? Would you say that was the sort of person that deserved to be punished? But unfortunately, the Jewish leaders, who were very unkind, and were a bit jealous, more than a bit. They were very jealous of Jesus. And they were afraid he was going to turn over their power and take their place. So they had reported Jesus to Pontius Pilate. And Pontius Pilate's asking Jesus, what, what is it that you've done wrong? Why have you been brought to me? And Jesus didn't, couldn't answer, didn't say anything. So in the end, what do you think Pontius Pilate did? He spoke to the people. There was a big crowd outside because this was a time when lots of visitors had come to Jerusalem. And he spoke to the crowd and he said, what do you want me to do with this man, Jesus? Now, did the people remember all the kind things Jesus had done and say, let him go? Or did they say, we want him to be crucified? They said they wanted him to be crucified. Now, at this time of the year, they could always let somebody go free, a bad person, someone who'd been in prison, someone who'd done something very, very bad. And Pilate thought, hmm, I know what I'll do. I'll ask them if they want Jesus or this very bad man called Barabbas to be let free. So Pontius Pilate, boys, are you paying attention over there? Okay, Pontius Pilate said... What did he say? Would you like me to free Jesus? Or would you like me to free who you can't, you know, you say kill him, but you don't know why. Can't think of anything bad he's done. Or do you want me to set this man free, Barabbas, who's a murderer? What did the people all cry? Barabbas, Barabbas, let Barabbas go free. So they did. That's what Pontius Pilate did. He said, right, we'll crucify Jesus and we'll let Barabbas go free. Was that a nice decision to make? And then, this is where my story with the bowl comes. You've been waiting for this, right? So one of his servants poured some water into his bowl and Pontius Pilate stood there very tall and proud. He put his hands in the water and he washed his hands himself then he took his towel, his slave gave him a towel, and he wiped his hands, and he said, I wash my hands of Jesus. You go and do with him whatever you like. It's nothing to do with me. I am innocent of this man's blood. Boys and girls, do you think that's true? Do you think Pilate was innocent? He had the power to let Jesus go, but he didn't. Now, the night before all this happened, Jesus had been in the upper room. Do you remember? He'd been in the upper room with his disciples. Pastor was just telling us, right? And in that room, he had given out some bread. Do you remember? A bit like this. And he said, this is like my body. I'm about to die, and this is like my body. And whenever you eat bread like this at a special service, like we're having today, remember me that I am, I'm going to die for you and for all people everywhere. And then Jesus took a cup, like a bit like this maybe, a bit like this, and he took, he took a little jug and uh, it had some grape juice in it. And he poured it into the cup. Watch, watch. Can you all see? Oh! And then he passed it around. And all the disciples had a sip. 
And Jesus said, whoever does this at a special service like we're doing today, if you love me, you'll do it in remembrance of me, because this is like my blood that will be spilt on the cross when I die. So, boys and girls, that wasn't quite the end of the story, because after the supper, Jesus got up from the table and he took a towel like this and he tucked it into his clothes a bit like this and then he got a bowl like this and he poured some water in it like this a bit more, a bit more and do you know what he did? Did he stand up tall and proud like Pilate? He got down on his knees like this in front of all his disciples. And he washed their feet. They didn't wash their own feet. Jesus washed their feet because that's something that a slave or a servant would normally do. But Jesus was their master. And they said, no, no, we don't want you to wash our feet. That's not your job, Master. But Jesus just quietly washed their feet. And then he took the towel from his waist and he dried their feet. And he did that to all 12 disciples. Even Judas, the one that was going to betray him. And even Peter, the one who said, Lord, I will never, never leave you or say anything bad or give you up to the soldiers. But that night, he did exactly that. Not once, but three times. So that's the other bowl story. Now, boys and girls, Jesus taught us to be like, like a servant by showing us. He didn't just say it. This is the way I want you to be. I want you to be kind. I want you to be loving. I want you to serve other people. I want you to do good deeds, not be proud. And do you know what? When Jesus died on the cross, the next day, the very next day, he died. But children, he rose again on Sunday, didn't he? Three days later, he rose again. And do you know, boys and girls, whenever you do this, take part in a service like this, and you take the bread, what do we remember? It's like the body of Jesus who died. And the drink of red grape juice is like the blood that Jesus shed on the cross. And when we wash our feet, we are showing that we are followers of Jesus because he asked us to do that. He asked us to follow him and do the same. Be kind, serve others. Children, which of those two bold stories do you like best? Do you like the one where Pilate washed his hands or do you like the one where Jesus used the bowl to wash the other feet? Which one do you like best? The Jesus story. And which one would you like to be like? Pilate or would you rather be like Jesus? Yeah. You'd rather be like Jesus. Do you know when Jesus died on the cross, something else I'll tell you. Are you listening? Can you put that stick down? Thank you. When Jesus wore a crown, they put a crown on his head. Do you remember? Now, I haven't got thorns, but this is holly. I haven't got, well, I have got thorns, but I picked this holly. Feel how prickly that is. Would you like to wear that stuck in your head? No. Do you want to feel how prickly and sharp it is? Would you like a crown like that stuck on your head? It made Jesus' head bleed. Did you know that? The way they stuck it hard. You want to feel the prickles. Now, Pontius Pilate, he probably wore something like this. Now, it's looking a bit bedraggled. But I tried to make something like this. These are called laurel leaves. And that's what the people, the Roman soldiers, and I mean the Roman governors, they would wear something like that. Now, feel those. Are they hard and prickly? Or are they soft? They're soft leaves, right? So what sort of a crown would you rather wear? A crown of thorns or a soft crown? You'd rather wear, you'd rather wear a soft one. Yeah. 
But you see, boys and girls, Jesus chose to wear the prickly one, didn't he? Well, actually, he didn't choose to. They stuck it on his head. But Jesus could have run away, couldn't he? Could Jesus have run away? Could Jesus have performed a miracle and disappeared off into the wilderness? He could, couldn't he? Because he was the Son of God. But if, yeah. Uh huh. Well, that would be a long run. But if Jesus had run away, would we be here today being able to say that Jesus died for us so that we can live with him? Right, boys and girls, just remember that little story of the two bowls. And you're going to decide to follow Jesus. And if you decide to follow Jesus all the days of your life and be like him, you'll remember that Jesus bent down to serve others. He didn't stand up and look his own hands. Jesus died on the cross for all of us, boys, you too. Jesus died for all of us, for every person that's ever lived or ever will live. And when God looks at us, what do you think God sees? Does God see all the bad things that we do, all the naughty things, all the unkind things that we say and do? Or does God see beautiful, perfect boys and girls and mums and dads and grown-ups just because Jesus died for all of us? And that's what God sees when God looks down on the earth. He sees beautiful boys and girls, perfect just the way he created you to be. And one day we will all join with Jesus in heaven, won't we? So you're looking forward to that day. Now I think it's time we had a song, don't you? Is there anybody here to play a song or is everybody back? And we're going to have a sing song, I think. A sing song. This I know. Oh, very good. Off you go. <laughs>
while waiting for the rest to come, shall we continue our singing and praising God. Hymn number 198, And Can It Be?
as we come to this moment where we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper, communion service that Christ have left for us, as we will be doing it in a slightly different way this time, allow me to guide you on what would be the steps that we will be taking. So, after I do my remarks, Shannon will be singing a very special song for us as our deaconesses uncover the table for us. After that, we will be having a special reading of the word for both the bread and the wine. And then uh, that will be done by Dr. Linden. And then Sister or Elder Eileen will be doing and uh, the prayer for the emblems, both for the bread and the wine. And after the prayer, Hannah will be singing a special song for us. While we are breaking the bread and serving the emblems to you. After everyone has been served, then I will be saying something for the bread first, and then we will partake of the bread. And I will be saying, after a few seconds or a minute, we will be, as you meditate and pray, and after that, I will be saying something for and reading for the wine, and then will be instructing us to partake of the wine. And after that, we will close the service um, with a song and with a benediction. I hope we will be able to continue to ask the presence of the Holy Spirit in our midst today as we welcome His presence in our midst and continue to reflect and remember the special moment that Jesus had spent in this world just to save you and me from our sin. So at this point in time, I would like to um, request Shannon to give us the special song, which would allow us to reflect as the table is being uncovered, um, reflect on the moment that Jesus had spent with his disciples in... Um, breaking the bread, preparing for the bread, breaking the bread, and distributing of the wine as well. May God bless us all as we proceed with this service. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Um, we're just going to sing a song called Raise a Hallelujah. If any of you know the song, feel free to join in and worship with us. Heaven comes to fight 
die for me I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is alive I'll raise a hallelujah With everything inside of me I'll raise a hallelujah I will watch the darkness flee I'll raise a hallelujah In the middle of the mystery I'll raise a hallelujah Fear you've lost your hold on me I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes, hope will arise Death is defeated, the King is alive Sing a little louder in the presence of my enemies Sing a little louder Louder than the unbelief, sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody, sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me, sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies, sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief, sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is alive I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is alive I'll raise a hallelujah I'll raise a hallelujah I'll raise a hallelujah I'll raise a hallelujah Amen First Corinthians chapter 11 from verses 23 to 26. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat this, my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had Sub saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. May God bless this. Scriptures.
Our dear Lord and loving Father in heaven, Lord, we bow and kneel before you now as your people. We are so grateful, Lord, that you did not leave us, but that you came to rescue us from this world of sin, from this realm of death, from this valley of the shadow. Lord, we're so grateful uh, that you did that. And Lord, as we think now on your broken body and on your spilled blood, which was broken for us, that was spilled for us, that we, Lord, may share in your eternal life. We thank you, Lord, that you won the victory. You won the victory over sin. You won the victory over death. And you're looking forward to the day, Lord, when we will drink of the fruit of the vine again with you in heaven. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for your resurrection. We thank you for all that you have done for each one of us. And we do look forward to that soon coming day when we can all be together with you forever. So, Lord, bless these emblems now as, as each one partakes of them, that we will remember your death and also your resurrection, Lord, and your victory till Jesus come. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Many hearts are hungry today Many trapped in darkness yearn for the light So many who are far from home And many who are lost Oh Lord, your wounded children need The power of your cross As bread that is broken Use our lives as wine that is poured out, a willing sacrifice. Empower us, Father, to share the love of Christ as bread that is broken. Lord, use our lives. Help us to begin where we are. Help us love the people near to our hearts. Then give our faith the mission field wherever you may call. Lord, love your world through each of us until we've touched them all. As bread that is broken, use our lives as wine that is poured. A willing sacrifice empower us father to share the love of christ as bread that is broken lord use our lives as bread that is broken use our lives as wine that is poured out a willing sacrifice empower us father to share the love of christ as bread that is broken lord as wine that is poured out lord as bread that is broken lord you Thank you for that, Hannah. For anyone uh, who, has, who needs a, a gluten-free bread, kindly raise your hand so that our deaconesses would be able to serve you at this point in time. So, all right.
Has everyone been served? Okay. As what was read to us a while ago, that when the Lord Jesus, on that same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he, had broke, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us all partake of the bread. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper and saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till it comes. Let us all drink off this wine. Please remain seated as we sing hymn number 338, Redeemed, for our closing hymn.
there we all have it. The three emblems. Ordinances. The ordinance of foot washing, the bread, the wine, that all represents of what Jesus did for each one of us. A good thing for us to not only partake in church every quarter, but a lesson that we could take with us every day of the week, every day of our lives, and ask what the Bible says. Do this in remembrance of me. Do partake of the bread and the wine until we see him in the clouds of glory. Meaning, until Christ comes, we should not stop from sharing the good news, the gospel of what Christ did for each one of us. And I hope this would give us an encouragement each day that today we have participated in this, all these old ordinances. And may it be that Christ will continue to strengthen us, empower us in the lives that we are going to live from this day onwards. May we also continue to look forward for his soon return and share the very message that we have in our hearts. May God bless us. Shall we all stand for our closing prayer? Lord God, Heavenly Master, we thank you for being with us here today. We thank you, O God, for this wonderful service and ordinances that you have left us for us to do. For us to remember you and for us to remember what you have done for us. It is our prayer, the Heavenly Father, that as we had surrendered our life fully to you today, that we will do so continually until we see you in the clouds of glory. And we will continue to share this love of yours as well, O oh God, to all the people around us so that we will be able to prepare them as well together with your Holy Spirit for your soon return and that, that they will be able to give your hearts to you as well. Lord, Dismiss us with your blessing at this moment as we continue to celebrate this day with you. We ask that your love, your grace, and your spirit would continue to go along with us and bless us, allowing us to live our life to the full and allowing us to live a life that is reflective of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for being with us. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Praise the Lord. So now we would be inviting everyone to join us as we have what we call an agave feast right at the main hall. We have some fruits, bread, um, water, juices. I don't know what ever has been prepared there. I would like you to join us and I hope you, we will spend this time so that we will be able to meet a new person, get to know some other people as well, and express the love of Jesus uh, to each other through this feast. And later on this afternoon, we would like to also encourage each one you know, to join us as we share ideas on how we could strengthen and continue to empower this church uh, through the different plans and activities that we would like to have for this coming week. For those who are watching online, if you would like to partake of the communion and you want us to bring communion to your home this afternoon, uh, please message any of the elders, any of the deacons or me so that we could visit you and bring you communion as well. Um, may the Lord bless us all as we continue to celebrate this day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for all the deacons and deaconesses who have prepared the service for us and for our elders who have served and for everyone who really have made this occasion uh, a joyous um, one for the name and for the glory of Jesus Christ. God bless you all. 
Happy Sabbath, everyone.